welcome to my channel. My name is Kika and today we're gonna do another no face photo ideas. I've done a few of these type of videos and they seem to really resonate with you. So today we're gonna take a look at some no face pose ideas for self portraits. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello. Would you be my song and I'll be your sonnet? You be my chair and I'll surely sit on it. Sometimes being in front of the camera can just bring out all these insecurities and self-criticism of how our face or facial expression looks, which of course isn't a reflection of reality because it is just how you look through a camera or a phone. Uh, but so having all these photo poses or these poses <laughs> with no face is such a good resource to go to and helping you kind of get more confident in being in front of the camera. I think photos that show human presence but without having the face visible is a really strong storytelling tool because it invites the viewer to fill in the blanks themselves and use their imagination and curiosity and actually not having the full story there can also help the viewer to identify more with the photo. All right, and with that little intro being done, let's get to the tips. The first pose idea is to sit down. So here you can play with hiding your face in your hands or you can curl up into a little ball or hunch over and even turn your face away from the camera. One good thing to remember though is to really try to elongate your spine and create some space between your arms and your body and also your legs. Uh, that kind of creates some space and some shapes. Um, and also put those Pilates lessons to good use and really keep your core engaged. Uh, hunching over and being very slouched just doesn't look so great in photos. Hold something in front of your face. Often it's said that just standing straight towards the camera can make you look quite stiff and unnatural, but actually if you hold something in front of your face, you can use that to your advantage and actually show this kind of awkwardness or stiffness um, in an interesting way in a photo that tells a different kind of story. I think our culture is quite obsessed with uh, showing off and being confident. So this is actually an opportunity to show that vulnerability and softness are also strengths. The third idea is to reach for something. So a good way to fix the issue of not knowing where to place your hand is to create a scenario where you are reaching for something. This will also help create that space uh, between your torso and your limbs and just create longer lines. The fourth idea is to look at the view. So this will work best for photos taken outdoors. So place yourself with your back facing the camera and really take in the view. And here, really look at the view, just don't pose and kind of show off you looking at the view, if you know what I mean, but actually really look it. Uh, look at it because that will make a huge difference in how you place your head and your whole body and that will also affect how soft and dynamic it will look and kind of how authentic it will read. Number five, laying down poses. For these type of poses you might need somebody to help you take the photo or you can build a do-it-yourself top-down crane. I have a tutorial in it so I link the video up here. I think it's gonna be up here. No, there, where? Anyway, <laughs> um, here it's really good to remember to try to put some tension in your body and not be a floppy seal, even though seals are very cute. <laughs> um, they kind of flop everything out and that might not look so flattering in a photo. So try to put some tension in there and you can also experiment with being on your side or on your back or on your belly. And again, remember to just have your arms a bit out from your body so it doesn't become all like too glued in. Number six is holding something behind your back. So this is a really playful pose and you just uh, face towards the camera and having something behind your back. And here you can, again, play around with different props and different ways to hold something behind your back. Number seven is movement. So adjust the shutter speed on your camera and try to move while you're taking the photo. Uh, one of my go-tos is to kind of twirl a little or walking away from the camera. That will just bring in some movement and that dynamism uh, and this feeling of catching a fleeting moment. Oh, okay, back on the couch. Number eight is to to the photo in profile. So uh, here you can try out just showing one side of your face um, and one Quite fun idea is also to try to shoot up towards the light or if you have a sunset uh, and that way you'll get just like the silhouette which is quite dramatic and I think pretty classy. Number nine is to sit down and look 
or gaze into the distance. I think this pose is so poetic and very calm and it's just so nice to evoke that just kind of stillness and feeling of reflection and just being there, taking it all in. And it's such a simple composition, but really evokes a lot of emotion, I think. The next one is a good hair day. So I'm going to reveal a secret. Well, it's maybe not a secret, but one of the biggest things I struggle with when taking photos is that my hair is just a mess and it does not look like how I want it to look. So when there is a good hair day, then capture it, savor it, uh, take a photo, and that way you'll still, you know, you'll be in the photo, but it's kind of the back of your head and not your face. Number 11, posing your hands. This is a really fun alternative idea to doing a self-portrait without having your face in it. Um, and I have a video to show you how you can take a photo with your both hands in the frame uh, on your phone without a tripod. So I'll link that up here so you can check that out. And this is a really nice way to invite the viewer into literally seeing your point of view. Um, even though I don't know if that's a little creepy. <laughs> and you can show kind of small daily moments from going about your life or holding something that you find really precious or inspiring. Number 12, stay grounded. So change up the angle even more and just show the lower part of your body and your feet. I think there is something really childlike and innocent in these type of photos. And it's kind of nice to put the focus sometimes on the things that is literally keeping us on the ground and this, this thing that, you know, allow us to take us on adventures and journeys. Number 13, take the photo from above. So this is kind of the stalker angle <laughs> or like somebody is looking over your shoulder. Um, but this is especially really nice if you are working on something, you have something in front of you to show that. And this is such an intriguing angle because it's something we don't usually get to see in a photo. Number 14, cover up half your face. So when you feel ready for it, you can try out with just covering half your face. So your face will be in the photo, but just half of it. Uh, and here it's really fun to just use some props. So I often use flowers or books, or you could even use sunglasses given the appropriate season. <laughs> and lastly, number 15, looking down. So this is one of my all time favorite poses. And this is when you're ready to actually have your face in the photo, um, but maybe you don't want to take that direct eye contact and have that lens up in your face. So then you can just look down if you hold something in your hand or just looking down at the ground. It's such a good way to just calm down the face. And also it kind of brings this nice mood of serenity into the photo. And it's not as confronting as looking straight into the camera. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below and also remember to subscribe and hit that thumbs up. Uh, if you'd like to see more of my stuff, come say hi. I am over at Kutovakika on Instagram. All right, see you next week. Take care. Bye. Bye. Hello, hello. A bee in my bonnet, hello. Hello, hello. A bee in my bonnet, hello. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello.